Tony Tanner. Welcome to His Legacy TV. I am so honored today to have a special guest, Pastor Maddie Austin. You had quite this, the upbringing. Mm -hmm. you, you're not from Minnesota. No, I'm not from Minnesota. I was born in Mississippi. Mississippi. Uh-huh. And uh, I was raised partly in Memphis before my father, uh, before I started school. in Memphis, that, Tennessee? Uh-huh, Memphis, Tennessee. Okay. And uh, my father was a sharecropper. And he left it, uh, left Mississippi and went to Memphis to get, a, you know, a better start, a different Some start. Some people don't know what a sharecropper is. Would you tell us what that a is? A sharecropper is uh, when a person, uh, it's like, I guess like a contract, you know, they make a, a verbal agreement or something to work on somebody's uh, plantation or farm. So you know, your your dad was working on something. Uh -huh, he was working on uh, Mr. The man's name was Mr. Tim. He worked on Mr. Tim. Uh -huh, he worked on his farm, and the, and they uh, worked the crops and gathered the crops in, and then at the end of the year, you know, they would sell the cotton and all of that, and at the end of the year, they would, uh, you know, kind of sell things up, and if they had because they. Uh, man that owned the uh, farm would give them allowance, you know, for the buy food and clothing and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So when they sold the cotton at the end of the year, then they had to sell up and if they, if it be any money over from what they had to pay him back with the loan, then they would get that money, you know, sometimes they wouldn't get no money. They oh, would work no. all year long. And all they would have gotten is living expenses. Uh -huh. And that's all they oh, got. Oh, yeah, that uh -huh. wasn't very fair. Uh -huh. well, that's what it is. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But wow. that's what, what it was. You work for someone on somebody's farm or plantation. And at the end of the year, mostly in December, or sometime, they would sell up. Mm. And if you had anything coming, they would give you that. And if you did, you just work the next year, you know. And so he was raising cotton for the mm -hmm. owner of the land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. and, did, and you said you had a brother. Did you just have one sibling then, or did you have other brothers and sisters? Uh-uh. It, it was eight of us, and so I had uh, three brothers, mm -hmm. uh-huh, and it was five of us girls. But uh, when my mother died, they kind of split us up. Oh. So all of us was not together, uh-huh. So, so your mother died. Were you pretty young then? I was eight years old. Eight years old, mm -hmm. and there were eight children with no mommy. Mm -hmm. When mother died, uh, my baby brother, he was three months old. Oh. Mm -hmm. How old? you were eight? I was eight. My sister was uh, nine, and Jose, and my oldest sister, she was about twelve. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. So did you, the older sister have to take over as the mother? Mm -mm, mm -mm. Mm -hmm. They took, uh, they took the, my oldest sister and, and carried her to my auntie's house because she was not uh, my father's child. Okay. Uh huh. She was a. She was she, a half sister. Uh huh. Mother had her because they, my father and my mother both had been married before okay. they got married. So, uh, they each my mother had a, a Joseda child, which in, and then my father had two, two girls. Okay. Uh huh. And so. When mother died, and we was all living in Memphis when mother died, Joe Sadie was there. It, we all was there at home. But then when, uh, after my mother died, my aunties and stuff, they talked to my grandmother and stuff and was saying about, uh, you know, he might try to use her for yeah, and everything. So they took the oldest sister away, and she stayed with my auntie, my mother's sister. And so that left my Marzella, my you know sister, uh, just her and I. She was the oldest, and it's a year and some months. So you're pretty different. close. You're uh -huh. almost we like all twins. Close. Mm -hmm. We all <laughs> close together. Yeah. Uh huh. And so it was. Uh, it was there. We all was there in Memphis. Okay. You know. Uh huh. And she'll say that she was. She was in Memphis too, but she wasn't with us. When mother died, mother got sick. We was living in Memphis. You know, she she got she got sick uh, in Memphis, but and I and I'll never forget that either. It was it, that was on a Friday night. 
My mother had had, had the baby, Henry. Yeah. Uh-huh. And, oh, three and months old? Three months old. Wow. Mm-hmm. And uh, my father, he was kind of, <laughs> he was a good man, but he was a womanizer. Sure. And so I guess he was out, uh, you know, messing around and everything. And a lady, I guess, that he was dealing with, uh, her, had the same name as mine. Her name was Maddie. Mm-hmm. She came, they came to the house, her and a friend, came to our house on a Friday night. My daddy, he would, when he got off of work, he had a good job, but a lot of, on weekend, when he got paid, he wouldn't come home. Uh-huh. He would go off drinking and would get be drunk and everything, you know. And So he, did, he didn't come home. He wasn't home that Friday night. But anyway, this woman came to the house, mm-hmm. and she said something. I don't know what she said because they was back in the kitchen. You know, how we lived in a shotgun house, you know, that's straight through your straight front Straight through. Uh-huh. So, so when she came, they was went back in the kitchen and was talking. And Your so, mother and this woman. Uh-huh. My uh-huh. mother and this woman went uh-huh. back in the kitchen and was talking. And uh, this woman, <laughs> I don't know what she said, hmm. but they came out and, she, and went out the front door. I don't know where they went. Didn't yeah. see them because we kids was in the house. And then shortly after they left, my mother came out running, and she had a long butcher knife. Oh, that uh, woman made her mad. Uh huh. She said something. Uh huh. I don't know what uh-huh. she said or something what she what she off. did. Uh huh. But it was a cornfield over across the street from mm-hmm. our house because we lived on a uh, dead end street. Mm-hmm. And uh, so when my mother she came out the kitchen running with the knife, you know, and so. We didn't know what was going on. So when she ran out, I ran out behind her. And she ran over across the street in the cornfield. And so I, I didn't catch her. And then she started going down the street. And I'm just right behind her, just running, you know. Yeah. Because I didn't know what else to do. Right. And so, so Zaya was at you home. You knew there was an emergency. Uh-huh. An emergency. Yeah. So so Zaya, my older sister, she was there at, at home with the babies and mm-hmm. the other kids. And so my mother, she ran on, I would say probably about, it was about three, four, four of a mile or something. She ran a, a long mm-hmm. way. And so she ran and she ran and I was right behind her calling her. And so I don't know what she was saying, but she was saying something. And she ran up on some people, uh, ran up into a, on a, a house. And she must have hit the door and those people heard her. And so... They came out and everything, and so I was telling them, you know, that was my mom, and I didn't know what what was going on, and so they wasn't far from this big busy street, and so my mom went when they came out and said something to her, she turned around and ran out off the porch and ran up in that busy street, and when she ran in that street, the cars and stuff they stopped was stopping on both sides, and she just fell down. Mm. On her knees, up there, in this, you know, in the middle of the middle of the street. Mm-hmm. She wasn't hit by a car; she just collapsed. I was right behind her. Yeah, mm-hmm. and she so, was probably kind of weak because the mm-hmm. new baby mm-hmm. and uh, and and this mm-hmm. emotional strain mm-hmm. she was under. Mm-hmm. And so she just fell down. And so you know, everybody got out. You know, people got yeah. out and trying to assist it. And I really don't know. Well, I guess the people's in the house probably called the police and, and the ambulance and stuff. And anyway. And you're watching this. You're eight years old. I'm right there. Yeah. I'm known to somebody else. Yeah. And so when the ambulance and stuff come and got my mom and they get her to the hospital. So I had went to the hospital with her and I gave the doctors all the information oh, and stuff that, that I. Were there. I gave them all the information and stuff that I could give them. And so then they kept my mom, you know. And then finally, sometime that night or morning, my daddy come home. And so he came to the hospital where my mom was crying and stuff. And so uh, they kept my mom out there. I guess she must have been, I don't remember exactly how long, but probably some days or maybe a week, mm-hmm. they kept her out there. Because they said that she was having complications. Um, from half, you know, from childhood. the childbirth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, so after they kept out there, 
then they sent her back home and they said it wasn't it was nothing they could do. They, oh my goodness. They, it was so bad. Uh -huh. They there was nothing else they could do for oh. her. So they sent her home. So daddy went and got it and brought her home. And her mother, my grandmother, was still living in Mississippi. Oh. And she wanted her to come home, yeah. come down there and stay with her. And that's what they did. My mother, she was at, at home, probably. She was at home. She just was in the bed because there was nothing she could do, you know. And I don't even know if she recognized us or, or anything. Oh, she that was so bad. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And uh, you so, bring the baby back too, to the grandmothers? No, uh uh. No, the we baby. kept the baby. Uh huh. Uh, so I don't know if uh, she recognized us. Uh, anything she was, you know, just there in the bed, and you know, in that shotgun house, the, at the bed was in her and dad's bed was in the front room, and the children's bed was in, you know, we slept in the middle room and sure. then the kitchen, but she was in the bed in the front room, and we would go around there and try to talk to her and stuff, but I don't remember if she ever talked to us or anything. I don't remember that, but uh, then uh, Mama wanted her to come home. And so daddy that took her, you know, let her go to Mississippi. Mm. And so she was down there in Mississippi, and we would just always be asking daddy when he would come home from work and stuff. We said, oh, daddy, we want to see mom. We want to see our mom, you know. And so he said that uh, he would take us to see her. And so finally, I don't know how long, how many weeks it was, uh, probably at least a couple of, two or three weeks. Mm -hmm. Uh, he came and, and talked, somebody would would go to Mississippi and, and would inform him what, how she was doing and everything. Bring the report. Uh huh. And my daddy, he was working. Yeah. Uh, on the, he was working. Uh, he had a factory job. He was working where they make Western oil. Oh. Mm hmm And so he would work every day. And so Zell and I would stay home and take care of the children. Mm. Uh huh. Even the baby. Wow. The three month old baby. Nine and eight years old. Mm -hmm. And Dad would show us how to put beans on and stuff, you know, to cook. cook. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> so Daddy came in and uh, he told us that week, he said, y'all get ready, he said, because I'm going to take y'all to see your mom on oh, Saturday. Oh, you're happy. Oh, my God. We were so happy. We were so happy. When that Saturday rolled around, we were little, like little ladies, you know, mm -hmm. getting the cheerings together and everything. And he got all of us loaded up in the car in Mississippi, where we was going was probably seven, eight, or 80 miles from Memphis. Oh. And so he drove us to Mississippi, and we were so excited. And when we got there and got out the car and went in the house, and they met us with the news that my mom was dead oh. in honor take us had. Oh. Oh. Known it. Oh. And that looked like my world came to the end. My heart was so broken. It felt literally like I could feel my heart in pieces. That's the way it was when God saved me. For all them many years, from eight years to thirty three I had a broken heart, and you know you can't even feel your heart, mm -hmm. but I felt a brokenness mm -hmm. in my chest, and I was so hurt, I couldn't stand to talk about my mom, and I was just, and then I was angry with God. Oh. You know, I got, why, what did we do? You know, I, I You thought it was a punishment? But I thought it was a punishment, that God was punishing mm -hmm. us. You know, what did we do? that he would take our mother. And then, oh, you know, and then after after she passed, well, they had the funeral and everything. And I remember. So uh, you just missed seeing her alive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I remember for us to go to the funeral, they had to buy us shoes and, and uh -huh. stuff. And, and at that time, they had them little black and white loafers and brown mm -hmm. and white loafers. Mm -hmm. They bought me some, some shoes. They didn't take us to buy the shoes to measure. And the shoes that I had, they was too tight. Oh, no. But I wouldn't tell them that they was too tight because I wanted to go to that funeral. Uh -huh. So they had my, had my mother's funeral. Oh. 
So you didn't have shoes before that, or they just weren't? We didn't have no shoes before, uh, before that. Uh, not, you know, so they bought us shoes and we went to the funeral. Then after that, the daddy had to get somebody to come and stay, and stay with us. So his sister came and stayed with all of us children, seven of us. Mm. Stayed with us for a while, and she was a young woman. Didn't have no children, you know, wasn't married or anything. But she was dating, so she wanted to go to South Bend where her sister and my father's mother then was living in South mm -hmm. Bend, Indiana. Okay. Mm -hmm. So she left us, and so Daddy didn't have anybody. Mm, he had no help. No, no help. And all, little children, nine and under. And, and a three-month-old baby. Yeah, yeah. And so what he did, because <laughs> he had to work, Zaya would stay home one week and take care of the children, do the cooking and take mm -hmm. care of the baby and everything. And I would go to school because oh. we had to walk a long way mm. to school. And then the next week, I would stay home oh. and take care of the children, and Zaya would go to school. Wow. Mm -hmm. So after that, what happened, my brother, Willie, he had gathered up some balls, cause balls, you know, pop balls? Yeah. You could, they would get, you could sell them. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Three, cents uh -huh. three cents or two cents. So he had balls. gathered up, he had gathered up a lot of balls and had stacked them up. And one of the neighbor's daughters come and had stole his ball. Oh no! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here he was saving, he was he working was saving, hard. Uh, to, to uh, yeah. you know, get him a little money to go to the store because we didn't live far from the yeah. store. And you know them houses set up real high. You remember how them houses cement set up? I set on them uh, cement blocks. Yeah. And so the house was set up real high. So that's what he had his. Because we would go up under the, the house. We could go up under there and play up under the house and uh -huh. stuff, you know. Well, she went up under there and stole his ball. Mm. And so he went looking for his balls and couldn't find them and so he come and told told us well Marzella my oldest sister she's kind of mean <laughs> she was protective she was the mama yeah, she, was, she the, was the new mama yep when he told her that they had stole his balls she went down there Peter when, when the steak children came out to play Zaya went out there and caught Peter by her hair and just whipped her through. Well, she should. She, she, she did. shouldn't have uh, stolen the bottles. Uh huh. So she's in trouble. Zaya went out there and beat it just beat it. <laughs> well, her mom and grandmother didn't like that. Uh -huh. Now we all played together. All the children in the neighborhood. We just yeah. came yeah. at you know after school and everything, and we played together. Well, they didn't like that Zaya mm. had beat up Peter, and so. I went to, I was at school that day and they called juvenile court. Oh no. They called juvenile court. And I guess they, they told them that we was there, but, you know, with no super no adult super mm -hmm. And so I was at school that day. And when I came home, they had taken all of my sisters and brothers to juvenile. Daddy had to take me there mm -hmm. when he got home from work, when we got back with and when I made that move again. So he, I went there. Oh, that was another devastating time. That mm -hmm. was he lost his children. Mm -hmm. He just they, lost his wife and they took, lost his children. Uh -huh, they took us to, mm -hmm. to juvenile court and then had us separated. Mm -hmm. Some they had the boys in one place and the girls in another mm -hmm. one, and then they had the baby mm -hmm. somewhere else. And so all the way we could see our brothers if the place kind of curved around and they would come to the window and we could wave at them oh. through the window, you know. So that's how we could see them. And so my father, he went to Mississippi where his brother was living and he asked his brother if he would come and take us, you know, so he could get us out of juvenile court. Right. Because they wouldn't let him have us anymore because he didn't have 
you know, no adult supervision there for us. Mm-hmm. So our uncle came and got us from, he came from Mississippi and got us out of juvenile court and we had to go to Mississippi and live with him. And so Auntie and him was so mean and they wouldn't feed us. Sometimes my grandmother, uh, my uncle would go for, and be gone all weekend and stuff and we would have nothing to eat and my grandmother taught us how to make a little pit out of bricks, them red bricks. And, and we would take a skillet and she would give us cornmeal and we would make a bread on that little open pit mm-hmm. because her daughter, my grandmother lived in a little house and her daughter lived in a, the other little house and then they had one little house back there for the kitchen. My auntie was so mean, sometimes she wouldn't even let her mom go in the kitchen and cook. So we, and she didn't like us at all because she didn't like my mom. Mm-hmm. So we couldn't go in the kitchen and cook. So grandma taught us how to build that little pit and cook, uh, put that little black eye, uh, raw iron skillet. We would cook that bread and stuff and that's what we would eat. Mm. You know, he would be gone all weekend. All this time we could go back, we had to sit up there with our grandmother and auntie, the only time we could go back to that room, to our house, but he had all the other part of the house locked off, and we had that one room. We, the only time we could go back there was that night mm-hmm. when time come to go to bed. Oh, it's mm-hmm. just outrageous. Uh-huh. I mean, it was, uh, but anyway, we cooked that bread and we would eat. And I remember my grandmother, she used to tell me, she said, you're going to be grown one day. His wife had some teenage boys, and so uh, I guess one of the teenage boys decided that he was going to try to get in the bed with my sister. Mm -hmm. And so they found that out, and so of course we had to leave there. We at home, Mm -hmm. we could no longer stay there. So Daddy had to find. Now remind Dad, we was in Mississippi, but Daddy was still in Memphis working on his job, mm-hmm. but you know, he would come back and see about us and everything. So he had to find somebody else to take care of us because we didn't have no home there anymore. Mm-hmm. So then he asked my mother's brother and, and her sister about taking us because mm-hmm. they lived on the same plantation. And so they did, but he was glad for the opportunity because it, him and his wife had separated and he only had one son and she had a daughter. And so we was, he, he saw us as hands to help him oh, work. Oh no, he thought you were the new servants. Yep, yep. Oh. So see, we, he, he had, he was there on that, uh, on that plantation, but yet he had livestock and, oh. and, you know, did a raise the little truck patch and all that stuff for yeah. himself. But yet, he had to pick cotton and stuff because he was a sharecropper. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so, he was glad to get it. Yeah, mm-hmm. all good, free help. Yeah, that's right. So, he got us, got some of us. Wow. And uh, uh, my, one of my sisters went to my grandmother, and the other one, the baby, she went with my auntie. Uh, my mother's sister, which was me. It's all oh, mm-hmm. me, me, mm-hmm. me. Oh, she was me. Well, and the rest of us was uh, with Uncle Buddy. And then my other auntie, my mother's, I think ain't really, she, uh, she wasn't the youngest, but she was somewhere in the middle. You know, she wasn't as old as my mom and stuff. She came to visit, and she wanted the baby, wanted to take Henry back to Crawford, Mississippi with her. And that's what she did. Uncle Bunny let her take Henry back long, long ways from us. We we didn't see him for years. And to this day, he feel kind of angry toward us because he thought we let him go there, you know, and be separated from the family. But we didn't have nothing to say. We eight and nine years old, you know? And Daddy couldn't do, I mean, it was out of daddy's hand because he done turned right. us over to them, mm-hmm. uh, you know, at that time. We right. we in Mississippi. And so that's the way it worked. And oh, I tell you, 
We was there working in the field. We did chores. We could. You were wood. just so young. Uh huh. You're we, probably what nine, ten, eleven mm-hmm. by then. Uh huh. Yeah. We cut wood. We milk cows. Oh. We picked cotton. You're the hired hands without being paid. We did everything. Didn't get. Picking what? cotton it is cotton has those sharp points on it. I, I never could pick it. I just couldn't do it. So <laughs> when you pick cotton, you have to take it. You take each one out of this it's a capsule, bowl, like a bowl, uh, a bowl, a bowl, mm-hmm. and you just pull it up out of there. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you don't put it in the sack behind. And then you, every time you put your hand in, you mm-hmm. probably jab yourself with those you sharp would, things. Like I said, they have little sharp corners on mm-hmm. it. And then plus, I read, I couldn't pick in the car. Because I would have a problem with my back. I was, Even then, I would have a problem with my back. And they said, girl, you can't have no problem with your back. You don't even have no back. And they would get angry with me. Mm. And so I'd be down here resting, trying to pick the cotton and looking for the snake. To, you know, cause the oh, snakes there's snakes stuff. in there. A poisonous snake. Oh, you know? my gosh. Mm-hmm. Probably copperhead. Yeah. And, and I'd be down there trying to look and see, because sometimes them snakes would get on them rolls and be curled up oh, and stuff, you know, gosh. down there. And then they had some rattlesnakes down there, too. Sure. Mm-hmm. And so I just I just couldn't do it. And so they, they couldn't understand that. And so they was they was angry with me. And then my oldest sister, too. They would get... Mm. <laughs> she left out the field. She, <laughs> they would leave her in the field when they get with home for lunch oh. and just say that she would she would beat them to the house <laughs> and so they was angry with her because that about that time daddy he was working he was good all week long he was work yeah but then on weekend he would be drunk the whole weekend mm. with losing mother and having all of those kids yeah. And not no help, not knowing what to do. It was just kind of too much for him. It's overwhelming. Only the God kept him going, mm-hmm. you know. And he wasn't even acknowledging the Lord at that time. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. But he had accepted the Lord early at an early age. Oh, said. really? So mm-hmm. God's hand was on uh-huh. him. Even God's then. hand was on him. Wow. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. Cause he had accepted the Lord. Yeah. He said at an early, when wow. he, early age, and they, and they was in their thirties oh. at that time. My yeah. mother was. When she passed and, mm. and dad, they was, they was in their thirties. Uh huh. Yeah. So we was pretty young. Mm-hmm. So we, you know, split up. Uh, Aunt Lute had uh, my youngest sister, uh, my uh, my grandmother. Now my grandmother had had the baby, and Aunt Lute had my other sister next to her. Mm-hmm. And my. Aunt Luke, she was so mean. She was so mean. Mm. And Uncle Buddy, he was, he just, he just didn't have the knowledge uh, to how to take care of us. All we was to him was just like help was, you know, somebody yeah. to work and stuff. And Slave labor. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's what we did. And weekends, he would leave and go to the little journey, that what they say of liquor and stuff and he'd be there all weekend mm. and he never cooked enough food for us you know we was just you were half starved mm-hmm. yes and when he would leave <laughs> we would uh, <laughs> go in the, the, he had a, a closet in the house and he would when they would gather up sweet potatoes in the fall of the year mm-hmm. and he put them up in the in the, in the closet when he leave we had this one little room he left us in. All the rest of the house was locked off from us. Oh, no kidding. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh. We all just stayed in this one room. Matter of fact, that's the room that I was in when God showed me the vision. Oh, it, tell me about that. Mm-hmm. Well, it was, uh, we would, as I said, we would, he was a chef robber and we picked cotton. And this day, it rained. And uh, when it rained, we would, leave, you know, go home. Because and, and you couldn't pick cotton in. I couldn't in pick the cotton night. in, uh-huh. And so we would go home and do chores or something oh. like that. And so if it was around lunchtime, you know, day the day, we would go and have lunch. So this day it rained, and we, I, we should have, I should have been out there helping with the chores and stuff. But I was drawn 
to that room and went in there and laid down on the bed. And when I laid down on the bed, the Lord kept me out in a trance because it, like, it was like I was asleep, mm -hmm. but I wasn't asleep, but I couldn't get up. Mm -hmm. And when I was in this trance, now I didn't know anything of the song they sang, this train, you know, on the way to glory yeah. and stuff like that. I didn't know, I didn't know you that. You never heard that. Had never heard it. But the, it, the, it was this train, it was on the track and this train was just rolling, you know, on the track. And I was on the very back of the train, you know, where that open thing Yeah, the caboose, that caboose or that, that caboose. area that you stand uh -huh, on. Where you stand on. I was on there. Mm -hmm. I was looking. And fuzz I could see, Noni, was peoples. Mm -hmm. I mean, just peoples everywhere. And then I saw the fire. It was the fire between the peoples. It was the fire behind the peoples, rolling over, just like a wagon wheel. Mm -hmm. Just rolling, rolling. And people running and hollering, trying to get on the train. And they was just stampeding and running over each other, some, you know. And I'm standing out there on the back of that train, and I'm just crying, just crying. I didn't know, I didn't know why I was, why, why would I be crying? Because I was, but I saw some of my, my sisters and stuff out there, uh, my, uh, my brothers, I, mm -hmm. I saw them in that crowd, you know? And so I, I, I was thinking, I should be happy. I'm on my way to heaven. Wow. And you uh -huh. never even knew about I that. Never, I training. never knew. Uh -uh. We, went to, we went to church and they had, uh, you know, preachers would come in and preach and everything. And we went to the morning bench and all that. But they never taught anything about the Holy Ghost. And, mm -hmm. and so they just, if you come up and confess. And we went up and confessed and everything. But the people never changed. They just kept that same lifestyle that they had before they did that, you know? Yeah. And so uh, I, I saw this train. I'm standing out there just crying, crying, crying. All these people. And they couldn't catch the train. Mm. <laughs> you know? I woke up, I guess. But I never, never, never forgot that train. It was so real It to was you. so real. I never forgot. Yeah. Uh huh. And then one day you were uh, going out in the field. You just started walking. Mm hmm. But the way they was treating us, it was something inside of me. Cause see, I had had a taste of a different lifestyle. Cause we had lived in Memphis, so I knew it was better things for me awaiting. And I wanted my sisters and brothers to. I didn't want them to stay there and have to live in that kind of lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Picking cotton. As slaves. Uh -huh. Picking slaves. Mm -hmm. Picking cotton. They, that's what they were, a slave. Mm -hmm. I didn't want them to have to live that way. So one day, they all we came out of the field, and I just went on over next door to our neighbor's house and asked them if I could stay there with her. Mm -hmm. I told her that I was leaving. <laughs> Look. I, I couldn't have been how I'm about 12 years old. Oh, just a little girl. Just a little girl. Yeah. But so I'm leaving. I'm going to Memphis for my father. Mm. Well, we, we just, us buddy lived up in this house, and they lived in that house. We're nowhere from where he lived. She told me, yes, I could stay there. Mm. So I stayed there a few nights. And then I knew that I had an auntie that lived up on the highway from the little town, I believe it was Polk. And so I decided I was going to walk up to my auntie's house so I could get some money and catch the bus. See, I knew about catching. You knew about the bus. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I, I was going to walk up there, make get some money, catch the bus, go to Memphis to where my daddy. Oh, I don't know how many miles. I started walking. Oh, is that so? I started walking. Wow. And finally somebody came along. And uh, so they carried me up there. Oh, that was good. And when I got there, I told my auntie that I was I had left Uncle Buddy. I wasn't going back. I said, I want to go to Memphis 
you know, for my daddy. Mm-hmm. You know. So they let me pick cotton, which I couldn't do. <laughs> oh. But I was I was in the field with them that week picking cotton. And at the weekend he paid me whatever little money he gave me. But it was enough for me to get a bus ticket. I got me a ticket and I went to Memphis. Oh. And when I got to Memphis, I got me a cab. You knew to take I a taxi cab. Yep, yeah, I got wow. me a cab. And going out to, to, to on the Cleve where my father lived. Mm-hmm. Well, the cab was going down there, view, going to where my father lived. And all of a sudden, I looked, and my father was coming down the street. In his he car. was coming he toward was me. Co- he was coming toward me. Okay. And I told the cab, I said, I said, stop, stop, that's my father, that's my dad, that's my dad, stop. And he stopped the cab, and I got out and ran over there, and I told him, I said, Daddy, I said, I left Uncle Buddy. Yeah. So your dad must have stopped when he saw the taxi stop. Well, uh huh. If he, he did, wow. uh huh. Because I was hollering, you know, I was hollering. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. You know, so he so he stopped, and I got out. No, oh, I bet his heart just jumped uh-huh. when he saw you. I got out and I told him that I had left there, and so he he was moving. Oh, had his stuff in the car. Oh no! <laughs> oh, you almost missed him. I almost if I if I oh. it was it was just a. God had that was divine intervention. Divine, yeah, divine. it was a setup. It was a setup. God <laughs> had it all set up. Boy, within if you would have missed him one minute later, or one minute earlier, you would have missed each I'd other. I missed it. I don't. I wouldn't wow. know who he was or how to find him. No, that was miraculous. Mm-hmm. And so he got got we got out and uh, he I got in the car with him. And so mm-hmm. him and I go to his new little mm-hmm. room. He had it. So we stayed there, and I would talk to him, and I would tell him. I talked to him like a little old lady. I said, Daddy, yeah. we gonna, I'm gonna, we gonna get the children, and we gonna bring them to Memphis, and you know, I just had big plans for yeah. the rest of the children. Yeah. And so it was a, uh, we I stayed there with him for a while, and we decided we was gonna look for a place to get the other kids in, because mm-hmm. that was my plan. So. I was what about about thirteen, so I went to this uh, Chinese place across from the bus station. Oh, it was a Chinese place huh. over there. Went there, I got hired oh. as a dishwasher. <laughs> oh, great! Making fourteen dollars a week. <laughs> That's not very much. Mm-hmm. That's what I, I wow. made. Washing dishes, mm. and I was making a, a my my little check. And Daddy, he was working on his job. So we set out to find a house so we could go get the children in bring them. Wow. So we did find a house. We found one of these big houses with an apartment on one side, on, on each side. Oh, okay. So my daddy's first cousin moved on once on oh. that side of the house, and we moved on the other wow, side of the house. that's perfect. That was great. Uh-huh. Yeah. She did only had one door. And so we loved Cousin Minnie. And so she was over there and we was over here. And so Dad and I, we got that got that place. And oh, I'm telling you, I was so happy. You know, we, uh, I went shopping. Daddy took me to the grocery store. And oh, honey, I was buying. I bought oh. orange juice. I bought wow, what a I just thrill. Had, you know, we didn't have no refrigerator. We had an oh, ice box. Sure, ice box. I bought all of that stuff home and put it in the ice box. And that Saturday, we was going to get the kids. So we mm. did. Dad and I went down that Saturday to get the kids. Well, Uncle Buddy wouldn't let Willie, my brother, come. Oh. And Marzella, my sister, he'd have married her off. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. She was the one that got, she got seven children. Oh. He married her off to some man's uh, son. Did son. she want to marry them? She didn't know nothing about him. Mm. No, I guess he sold her. He sold her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He sold her into marriage. Uh-huh, yeah. And married her off, so then uh, she couldn't come. But the mm. rest of the children. We got them and we brought them to Aww. Memphis. Yep. And I tell you, that was a glorious time oh, for me. Yeah. I was so happy. Oh, that's so mm-hmm. wonderful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you still had that hollow spot from when your mother died. Oh, it was broken. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, it, it just, it, it never got healed. 
It didn't get healed till I was 33 years old. Mm. I would look up in the sky and just wonder why, why, uh, you know, what did I ever do? Why am I, why are we going through, why they mistreated us? I just refused to stay living in that kind of condition. I knew, I didn't know anything about the Lord, but I just knew that it was something better and I wasn't going to sit down. I was going to go forward. Okay. Well, from my uh, childhood, the way I grew up and uh, the life that I lived, I, I became depressed. And I went to the hospital. I was hospitalized. Oh. And that's why I found the Lord at, while I was in the hospital. I did not know that. Uh-huh. I had been in the hospital for about uh, three weeks when I... Uh, one of my friends, uh, it was a traveling evangelist, his name was Elder Mooney, came from Illinois, and he was running a revival. And my friend uh, asked me if I wanted to come to the revival, and I told her yes, and she sent her daughter to pick me up, and I That's went nice. to the revival. And she began to ask me if I wanted to accept the Lord. And so I didn't know anything about except yeah what does that mean? Uh, yeah you know what what do you do <laughs> i start telling her all of my faults i was saying well i can't accept him now because i at that time i was smoking and uh my lifestyle was not right you know and everything so i was just telling her all of my all of my faults and then she began to Put the scripture on me. She began to give me the scripture how Jesus said He's faithful and just to forgive us for all sin and unrighteousness, you know. Yeah. And so, and as we continued to talk, and then she gave me the scripture how the Lord said, If you ask, you shall receive. If you knock, the doors open unto you. You know, that's the scripture I received the Holy Ghost on with. But that she gave me that scripture because I received. I got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost that night. Wow, uh -huh. all at once. A lot of people don't uh -huh. have All that. at once. All wow. at once. I got saved and filled, sitting on Church Street at the U of Minnesota. Uh -huh. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. So actually, what you were thinking when you started telling her, oh, I can't accept the Lord because I've got all these things mm -hmm. wrong with me. Mm -hmm. You thought you had to be cleaned up in order mm -hmm. to ask Jesus into your heart yes. to be your Savior. Yes. That, that you weren't worthy. You thought you weren't worthy. I thought I wasn't worthy. Mm -mm. And I thought that I had to wait until I could, so I didn't know how I was going to get clean because I didn't even know that plan of salvation, you right. know, but uh, I thought I had to wait until everything was right in my life. I got all of that behind me, you know, right. and then I could be saved. But then she went on to explain the scripture to me, how Jesus come to save us because we are sinners, you know, and he come to forgive sin. Yeah. And that, and that night, it was on a Friday night, i never forget, it was on my Youngest brother's birthday, November the 30th. She was sitting in the car before I went upstairs. She asked me, she said, do you want to pray and ask the Lord to save you? And I said, well, I don't know how to pray. Yeah. I, you know, I didn't know. And I was no. ashamed. Oh. I was so ashamed, you know. And, and, I, and I, I sat there and uh, she said, you know, just, just, you know, just pray, just talk to the just Lord. Talk to the Lord. Uh -huh. yeah. And ask Him, you know, to forgive you. And somewhere known it, I don't know, it just came over me. I just began to, just the best I knew how, I just began to ask the Lord, you know, to forgive mm -hmm. me. And, and I'm telling you. <laughs> Did it feel any different? I was so joyful. I mean, a change take, <laughs> took place right then, you know, before it's, Feeling something, I don't know if I really felt anything. It's not about feeling. Uh -uh, anyway. It's not I'm about feeling. Uh -huh. It's not about feeling. No. It's about the believing and receiving. You know, yeah. because he comes in and he do the work. When you ask him to forgive you of your sin with a sincere heart, he changes your heart. And the Lord does the work. The Lord does the work, <laughs> and I mean, you no longer, and you don't, you, I, you don't, you no longer the same. Yeah. Known it from that night to this day, I have never been the same. Wow! How it was old a were chain. you? May I ask? Uh, About were you grown up? Yeah, I was thirty-three years okay. old. Okay. 
You're a pastor. Yes, I'm, I'm a pastor evangelizing. And uh, so I'm traveling around going, uh, doing uh, meetings at churches and homes. And I also have a prayer group at my home. Maddie may be soft-spoken, but she is a powerful woman of God. You know, there's a lot of people who are in a situation, a bad situation, and they understand that there is no way out, but they still have that hope. I'm wondering, Maddie, if you'd consider praying for the people in our audience who are feeling hopeless and they need that special touch from God. They need to know God. Mm -hmm. Would you just look at the camera and, and pray for them? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Father, mm -hmm. I just lift up your peoples to you right now. Father, you are the hope of glory. Yeah. You are the set, you are the one came to bring salvation to everyone that is lost. And so, Lord, in the name of Jesus, those people that have no hope, some, oh God, is in very despair this day and see no way out. Let them know, oh God, show yourself to them just like you did me. Father, let them know that you are the hope of glory and you are the way. And you come to set the capture free and to save the sinner. Nothing they have done that you will not forgive. So, Father, touch them right now. Stretch out your hand, that hand of mercy, and lift them up. Father, let them know that there is a way out. You are the way, and you will set them free. And whom you set free is free.